What's up guys? Welcome back to my channel, Chef's News. So today I'm going to be talking about some very important topics for anyone that wants to be a chef or anyone that is a chef. Uh, whether or not you should study to be a chef. So I'm going to go through some key points, the positives, the negatives of formal education. Uh, some other study that you can do to be a chef in the industry uh, to improve your skills and your knowledge. And general things that you should be doing as a chef in terms of study uh, and reading and uh, learning to become a better chef. If you're new to the channel, welcome. And if you're not new, then welcome back. If you enjoy these videos or if you have any comments down below about what I'm talking about today, then please feel free uh, to comment. I will read all of the comments and answer them. Uh, if you like the video, please, down the bottom, subscribe uh, and like, the like. it will help me out a lot and give me motivation to make some more videos for you guys. Thank you very much. So guys, I want to talk about first studying to be a chef, to make the decision. First, you need to make the decision, do you want to be a chef? Now, I have worked in the industry since I was 17, not as a chef the whole time, but I've, I meet people uh, throughout my, I've met people throughout my career that have worked in the industry 5, 10, 15 years and they still haven't made the decision that they actually want to be a chef. So first of all, you need to evaluate your situation and make the decision, do you want to be a chef? Then we can go ahead with studying. In regards to studying, I'm going to talk about three different types of study that you can do to improve your knowledge and become a better chef. Uh, I'm going to talk about why I think they're good and or bad uh, and what they're going to do to improve your abilities to cook, to manage yourself, to manage your time, to work with others and improve your knowledge to becoming a better chef. So first I'm going to talk about a formal education in terms of a diploma. In the UK we have NVQs, uh, also apprenticeships. Uh, in Australia, I know that there's apprenticeship programs that last three to four years. So this kind of study is very, very strict and regulated. Uh, it generally goes on a timeline. I know now uh, people offer in, uh, in-house study, which you can complete while working and, and have a very low attendance to a, a formal classroom. And it requires you to apply yourself outside of working hours in your personal time to actually studying and keeping up to date with your coursework. So people have a lot of questions. Uh, how many hours a week do I need to commit? Is it worth the money? And uh, will it make me a better chef? Uh, and how will it benefit my career? So first I want to talk about how many hours I did as a mature age student studying of, uh, of essentially a part-time course. So my courses was dedicated one day a week for each each week until I compl completed an NVQ level one, two, and three. Now for level one and two, it was very low contact hours outside of college, but in, in college, I had to have one day a week uh, that I, I committed fully to attending the class and, and going into class. So this, this generally bit into my free time, uh, that one day was my day off, sometimes my only morning off for the week if the restaurant was busy. Uh, and it was quite tough because I had to be in the kitchen at 8 a.m. and finish at four o'clock, five o'clock in the afternoon by the time you get home at six, or maybe you have to go straight into work. Now, the next, the next question I get a lot is, is it worth it? Now, for my level one and two, it costs less than £1,500 over a one and a half year period. I never looked at my courses and neither should you as a cost. You need to be looking at as an investment. When you put money aside and leave it in an investment bank or an investment portfolio or your pension, you, you think of that initial investment and it's going to grow. So you look at this as a bunch of knowledge that is going to grow over time and you're setting the foundation of your career with the knowledge that you're learning inside the kitchen. So is it worth it? Absolutely. Private schools and private culinary educational courses can be very expensive. Now, this is something that you would be entering 
with prior understanding and maybe already have NVQs. And I wouldn't recommend the private sector for unless you are really, really knowledgeable and already have years of experience. And this is going to hone your skills to the next level. But in terms of base education, MVQ level one, two and three diplomas uh, in hospitality management and culinary, it's an investment. It's a small fee, a fraction of the cost of higher education, and it is really going to give you a foundation of knowledge that you can draw on 5, 10, 15 and 20 years down the track. I, I also get a few questions, is it worth my time to study? Now this relates back to my initial comments in regards to, do you want to be a chef? So if the question is yes, then it refers back to what I was saying before. It will give, give you a foundation of knowledge, like a book in your head that you can constantly refer to and base so much of your theoretical and practical knowledge back on your lessons that you learn in the kitchen and have access to that unlimited access. It's your brain. You've made the, you've made the time to study and put the knowledge in there and you can apply it wherever you need, at whatever time, even in the home cook, home cooking, work cooking. It, of course, it's worth it. So the next form of study that I talk about in terms of being a chef is some more specialty classes. Now, I've seen in London specifically, uh, even my wife have been on cooking classes around the world in Morocco and in Australia, uh, in Turkey as well. So a lot of kitchens, a lot of specialty restaurants, uh, bakeries, anywhere uh, that specializes in a particular product will sometimes offer a specialty class. It can be one, two or three days, maybe a week intensive course. Some of them even offer a certificate of approval to say that you have completed this course. Now, maybe you're moving into a, a new restaurant or you want to push your career into a different direction. These courses are amazing to gain knowledge from someone who is maybe the best in the industry uh, and, and gain their knowledge and use that to your advantage. And like I said, coming back to building on that foundation of knowledge that you can draw on. Every chef should have a foundation of knowledge. It makes you quicker. It makes you faster. It makes you be able to think on your feet better and improve your cooking. And these little courses and one day course, a two day, a three day course, is, is absolutely a great way to build your knowledge and build your understanding of uh, the kitchen and the culinary world and improve you on being a better chef, a chef and help you improve others to improve their chefing too. So I think, I think absolutely these are a great way. Maybe someone that doesn't want to study full time or already has studied and you want to build your knowledge even further, invest in these courses. They're great fun. You're going to meet some more people and have a better understanding of what you're doing in the kitchen all the time. You can also build on these and change their ideas and improve them and use them in your own restaurant. So it's absolutely a great investment to, to look for something like this and don't be shy and, and step out of your comfort zone and do it. The third thing I want to talk about is studying outside of the kitchen itself when you're not at work. So from the day I started in a kitchen up until today now, I utilize any resource I can uh, to improve my knowledge and grow my understanding of what's going on. I've never met a chef that can truthfully tell me they know everything about a kitchen or a res uh, uh, ingredients or this or that. There's specialty people that, wow, have huge knowledge, but in every aspect, there's no chance. In a whole lifetime, if you studied every single day for the rest of your life, it's unlikely that you still know everything. It's just impossible. So some of the resources that I like to use are, are books. Books are a great way to build your understanding and have a concrete knowledge. YouTube is a great way to see techniques in action and someone actually talking you through and working you through a video monologue of how to see how to do something from start to finish. And the internet has a vast, vast array of recipes, uh, ingredients. Wikipedia yeah, is great for like searching ingredients and seeing what something actually is. Sometimes you might get like a puree or a sauce of a fruit or a vegetable that you've never even seen the fruit, but you use it every day. So 
understanding where that comes from is, is a great little bit of knowledge that you can then it gets me excited, you know, to see a fruit in the process, maybe behind making a, a, a certain dish or ingredient that you buy pre-made, maybe even see how you make cheese, watch a documentary on Netflix even. You, you need to be studying outside. And this is, this is where my final topic, being a chef is not just a job. Being a chef is a lifestyle. Being a chef is your life. It takes over your life. In terms of working hours, yes, it doesn't have to, but in terms of the way you see the world and what you picture is interesting and gives life, each each culture and each city and each country does different things with different food based on so many different aspects, religion, uh, geography, topography, all, all of these things will affect the way you people cook the way that people eat and that's what being a chef is about is growing your understanding of food and how it's made and how it's prepared how it's even stored and that study element will apply back to that and if you don't have an open mind and you're not willing to study to become a better chef and have a better understanding of food and ingredients and processes then you're, you're not going to get the full fulfillment out of what being a chef is about so I recommend studying in it all forms. First, study uh, your formal education, build that foundation, build that understanding of what the processes are, what the ingredients are too, and create some good connections in a classroom environment. Then you wanna go and study some specialty subjects like specifically sourdough classes are very popular at the moment, sushi making classes, I went to a, a pasta making class with my wife as a bit of fun, but also a bit of knowledge. And it, it, it taught, even though it was fun, it would taught me a foundation of knowledge that I can draw back on and apply to my kitchens. And then finally, see being a chef as a constant study. Study new flavors, study new recipes, study new restaurants that you visit, study new dishes that you've never tried before, study new ingredients that you've never tried before, go traveling see the world, taste the world, enjoy the world. Guys, I really hope this has answered some of your questions. Uh, and if you have any questions, then feel free. Uh, feel free to ask in the comment box below. I'm more than happy to answer them. And if you like this video, then please like and uh, subscribe. I'm going to be continuing to make some more of these videos. And I hope you enjoy. See you later.